Hey there, film fans. I'm Jeff. I'm Dave. And I'm John, and welcome back to The Love of Cinema, a pod in which we'll challenge one another to discuss movies, both new and old, with a strictly positive critical eye. That's right. And to avoid any lazy negativity, <laughs> we are making this episode. <laughs> <laughs> We're making it a what? We're making it a drinking game, people. So anytime you hear that horrific sound you just heard, that means that somebody said something negative or stupid i guess about a movie or anything else in which case we hear that buzz we have to drink we have to try to keep it positive that's the game so pour yourself a glass and when we say something stupid storm up and smack the shit out of us that's right or go on twitter and do a stream of consciousness uh, roast of us like somebody did last night it was youtube It it was a youtube video one of our youtube's got like it wasn't even a roast like it was like extra information i feel like i was watching the special features of like our broadcast (laughs) (laughs) all right people well today we are going to be talking about everything everywhere all at once a movie which if you haven't seen yet don't worry you can keep listening to the podcast you still won't know what's going on when you watch it (laughs) i can't it was fun nope (laughs) um any business that you guys want to get into before we dive I, into look, I this a, episode? I got a couple of things uh, uh, for just quick thing for this. Get week. them off um, your chest, Dave. Well, you know how Amazon bought MGM recently. I, oh, I yeah. heard that. That sale yeah. went through. Amazon has bought MGM, so they now own the entire Bond uh, catalog. What's Correct. the first thing they do with that property? They're doing a fucking <laughs> reality a TV minute. show, a reality oh. TV show with James Bond themed that is basically the Amazing Race rethemed. Oh boy! I was like, "What the That's fuck?" That's not a strong choice. Do- Neither you- was the, uh, the. Make your joke. No, sorry, no, no there off. was no joke. I'm pissed about this. I'm like, what a waste. Mm. I thought that little <laughs> spiel they did in the the remembering James Bond, the years of James Bond during the Academy Awards, was strange too. I was like, what is happening? Is James Bond over now? Like, now, yeah. now, now we understand. Like, what, like I mean, put him in the memoriam, sure. How much did Amazon pay them strange. to do this? Can I <laughs> honestly? I mean, that was like quite an advertisement, like in show. I, I don't want to say. I don't want to say much about. I really don't want to say much about the Oscars, even though I have so many fucking. We've got about to. It. We've, We've got, got to. to. We got to talk okay. about it. I'm so sorry if you're listening to this in the future, but really, really quick, we have to talk about Oscars 2022. Uh, the slap. You guys could talk about the slap. The, it was honestly the best thing that could happen, even though it was a terrible thing that happened. But these Oscars were so fucking poorly produced. I don't understand how they get worse every single year. The, the show. And so, to your point, it's, John, it's they do a pro- bond. It's because they're they do producing a bond. for ratings, not entertainment. Oh, okay. So th- these are the ratings. You ready? You do a Bond tribute, and not any of the living Bonds were there. <laughs> you don't. It didn't break the book. You do a Godfather tribute because it's the 50th year. You bring out Robert De Niro, who wasn't in The Godfather, but that's fine. But they don't even mention that. He doesn't speak. Al Pacino comes out. He doesn't speak. Robert Duvall, who's still alive, he's not there. I think Talia Shire is still alive. Is she still alive? She's not there. So, yeah. And so uh, Francis Ford Coppola speaks. Great. Who introduces them? P. Diddy. And then what do they do? They show the clips of The Godfather, and they have a fucking hip-hop beat underneath it. What the fuck are they doing? This is the 50th year of the godfather why are they changing the footage for our quote-unquote ratings it's such horseshit the whole thing was so poorly produced you do we we don't talk about bruno at 10 p.m for the kids and you don't even have the people who did the voices also we have five songs anyway so they just added a sixth and here they are trying to talk about how they're cutting down the time of this telecast and rather than do the two gun conso songs together like enchanted did like uh fucking slumdog millionaire they do a medley no we just added a song we added a museum trip with wanda sykes which was dumb we added all this horse shit and they kept telling us they were going to cut it down and they cut eight categories out of the telecast except they did it they plugged them back in and horribly terrible horribly terribly underproduced just shoddy 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 jobs and that then it was cut horseshit. off the visual effects guys mid like they were limited to a fucking tweet for their speech they were cut guys. off mid like the best inter- yeah. best for best international film they gave an Oscar and the whole point of the o- the whole point of the Oscars is the awards. So when you cut off the speeches, go fuck yourself. That's the whole reason we're there. The songs, the spectacle, that's that all stuff. That's all the sweetening. That's all the seasoning on top. But the awards is the show. You want to cut eight words from the telecast, fine. But then you air best international feature and then you play him off after literally one sentence. But I got stuck with five minutes of Wanda Sykes in this museum where she was making bad jokes, the same bad joke over and over again for five minutes. This 
show. I, I can't even mm. believe how horribly produced these fucking shows are. To and the point mm. where when, when Coda won, when, and I kind of like Coda, even though if Coda, if they only did five nominations for Best Picture, Coda wouldn't even been nominated for Best Picture. I don't think it was the best choice for Best Picture, even though I did really like the movie. But when Coda won, I just turned it off because I was like, thank God this is over. I, it, I can't believe how horribly produced this show was. Every year they make all of these big decisions and every year it sucks worse. I don't get it. Folks, Jeff didn't want to talk about the Oscars. I'm, I'm really glad. I'm really glad I let you, Guys, you say that. Yeah. I think everybody feels that way. I mean, you, you tuned to Jeff's therapy show. Uh, I love the Oscars. Uh, yeah. Welcome also, back to no, the, the reason. Yeah, yeah, the reason yeah, yeah. I'm mad. The reason I'm yeah, mad. We should say that first of all is that we we like the we love the Oscars. Like we used to. Jeff and I talked about to. it years ago when we were in college together, and we all, we all talked about them when we were living together. I mean, I never hated on this show the way a lot of other people did in the like traditional it's just a bunch of rich people getting together and doing this thing i never really understood what people thought it was supposed to be it was an award show it was it was it only existed I mean, we can get into the history of why it existed, which is a little bit corrupt. But for, for it is, for, it was, you know, it was what it was for so long. And if you don't enjoy that about the entertainment industry, then no one can make you watch it. So I don't understand this like shallow grab to try to change music to be more approachable by young people. But like, that's not what cinema music sounds like. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's, I don't, it was cool last year when Questlove did it because those were extenuating circumstances. He has this whole kind of class around him and it kind of nobody probably thought too much about it because it was such a strange Oscars last year. But I don't know this one. It just felt like there were all these strange like tentacles of uh, desperate reaches at youth. And it just felt like it wasn't itself. And more importantly, I'm sorry, but we have to say it. Yes, the Academy is still mostly made up of older people because they have a career in the arts. And I didn't feel like most of those people were comfortable in the room that was there. We were there for the people who work in the arts. So yeah, we, as yeah. we try to build up the industry and we try to get representation greater, we also don't want to make people who make up the bulk of the industry feel uncomfortable when it's their yeah. fucking night. And I, I felt uncomfortable for them. And it's just, I don't know, it's, it's getting worse. I don't think any of, of these things feeling, are working. Speaking of feeling uncomfortable. David. <laughs> it's like, we get, we're like, it's all anyone's heard about for the last two days, to be honest. Like, the slap Jesus heard around Christ. the world. Um, it's... Oh my god! What the fuck was that about? Like, to be yeah, honest, we were, I think we, yeah, I mean, we know what it was about, but like, there was there was some serious mistakes and errors of judgment that made there. It started with Chris Rock. He does not have the high ground in this. Trust me. Um, like, I feel like that joke was a quick throwout. It looked like he was in the middle of a, a routine and stopped and pivoted and threw out an improv. Okay, bad choice. I don't know. I bad think, choice. I think There's two rules it. in comedies. There's two rules in comedy. You don't pick on people's appearance. And you don't go for like disabilities, etc. And he, whether intentionally or accidentally, hit both. So straight away, yeah. he's put himself in a very tell that very to Reggie bad, from Nutty Professor. Yeah, Dave. He's, he's very, very, a very bad position. And mm. <laughs> women be stopping, baby. <laughs> but then, then Will Smith makes the decision to storm up on stage and slap the guy in the fucking face. In front Storm of an audience, storming it, is the right word. That was a wide stance. Yeah, wide stance. It, it, in front of Had in some... front of what 150 million people, including children, who have now got the message that the children, yeah, that's, slapping yeah, that's slapping, that's slapping someone is just fine if they piss you off. Yeah, don't use your words, yeah. kids. Punch the fuck out of them. No, okay. So here's here's yeah, really it, awkward. I'm not gonna like. There were some errors in judgment. Everybody fucked up there. No one was right in this scenario, for in my opinion. But what I would have liked to have seen happen if he was gonna do anything. Um, because like Jada could have done something like she, she could have approached later and gone, that can, wasn't, that wasn't cool or whatever. They, this could have been handled at the after party. She whatever. should have been completely left out of this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if she even needed defending. It was like, yeah, she was, her, her feelings were hurt and stuff. Okay. He felt like he had to defend her. So he storms up there. The best thing in my opinion he could have done was walked right up to him in the middle of his radio mic range and quietly said, you go down there and you apologize to my fucking wife. That would be cool. Because it would have flipped the whole thing on its head. Suddenly, Chris rocks the asshole because he made a joke about like her bald head, which obviously upset her. It was the best course of action he could have taken. He chose really badly. I think there were a lot of things he could have done 
that yeah, would have kept him on the high ground, and yeah, he just chose like to, the one no, thing. I mean, nobody has the like, high I ground. I guess here. he slapped him and didn't punch him. I guess that's like all we can be grateful for that it didn't turn into like a fight on stage between grown men. Uh, but yeah, it was awkward and strange. And once again, I okay. felt really bad but for also, every single adult that came on stage after that because nobody gave a shit. And even if the I show mean, was going to try to do something special, points, and we saw we saw the second woman in history win best director, and nobody's going to talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Nobody fucking cares, and it matters. And the award yeah. that came right after them, I couldn't even tell you what it was. It was but Questlove. He, Questlove won. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Questlove won best fucking documentary right after that, and nobody <laughs> fucking paid attention. Yeah. I mean, so, it's, yeah. Just, it's just real so, shit. Anyway, so, so that's all, that's all we have on mistakes. that. That's all we have on that. <laughs> Will it Smith didn't make bad it better, choices, like, and they made round. some mistakes. <laughs> bad choices all around. Could have chose better. Nobody did. Uh, sad, and yeah. now go away. Because, like, yeah. you know, much better things happened that night. Yeah. Like, and I don't know if we're ever going to, this is the last thing I'll say, and then maybe we should get away from this. I, we had talked about this last year, I believe as well. Now, again, we, pandemic is weird, but we talk about it often on this show. Like, what do you do when a culture is transitioning away from movies being an event in everybody's life on average once a month to almost never going to the movies except for one kind of movie? So it doesn't really feel like the movies anymore. It feels like that thing. And then movies and TV are just watched at home. And there's no event around it. And then the show comes in and tries to make it an event. And people are like, but that's not what mm. movies feel like anymore. I don't know. It's I just feel something like, you watch at home and I feel like press movies, pause every time you have to pee and make something else to eat. Movies just putting up a good fight, dude. Like, I mean, yeah. I don't know what your theater was like, but mine was packed. I had to search yeah. for a decent seat. Well, it's only oh, a, I was at a full IMAX theater. But I live yeah. in Los Angeles, you know, yeah. and the night and it came out. So. Yeah, so. And I'm, I'm in New York. It, it was three days later. But still, like, this... I. It was a pretty damn. A lot of thing. Biden votes in the room. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think we're we're, we're not. <laughs> people, should, I think people, I think people are I everywhere should go watch this that. movie. I mean, yeah, whatever. Let's get to it, guys. We yeah, bitched let's, enough. Let's yeah, talk we about this enough. crazy fucking movie. It's yeah. crazy fucking movie. If you need to have a giant mushroom trip to start the year off no, right for movies, no, do not do that. Do not do that. Do not do do that. You'll, you will no, run screaming this, into the street. Yeah, the movie no, is saying the mushroom this trip. is it. This is the fucking trip. This is going to clean slate well, you that moving was, forward. That the was past the first three years thing. never happened. Like I walked out. I walked out of that movie, and I, the first thing I did was texted, and I was like, I feel like I took drugs, but I didn't take drugs. Like yes. that was that was my first reaction to that movie. But you you tell me you're like, anything like this. you're like do you have drugs? I was like no, and you're like okay, you won't actually need them. You don't need them. And I was like okay, <laughs> I was like great. All right, well let's set right, this let's, up. Okay, let's crudely attempt to speak about something that can't be talked about. Let's let's give it a shot. This yeah. is the so this unbroadcastable is everything, film. <laughs> everything, everywhere, all at once. I believe it's still playing in limited release by the fact that it's only available in one theater in New York City as of right now. So yeah. it's probably still getting rolled out, but the reviews are really good. Um, this is directed and co-written, co-written, co-directed by my IMDb is having a shit storm right here. Dan Kwan and Daniel Shiner. The Daniels. Who- who together <laughs> did, they've done a lot of music videos and they've done some work separately, but Swiss that's, Army Man was the they, last movie. That's that what they, they credited as, the Daniels. The Daniels, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this movie stars, I think the cast is important to set up here. Oh my Michelle, God, yes. Michelle, Michelle Yeoh, who is an international legend, absolute international legend, Crouching Tiger, Crazy Rich Asians, Tomorrow Never Dies. Uh, and then recently we saw her last year in Shang-Chi, and mm-hmm. you also have Stephanie Shu. You have uh, James Hong, who has 450 IMDb credits, and he finally <laughs> has his star on the Hollywood Walk of oh, Fame. Okay, also, yeah, oh my fucking God. I, I wanted to go to that when he got that. Like, the, he is sure. one of my favorite actors ever. Like, I've seen this man in so many things. And I just want to say, uh-huh. he looks great. He looks great. He's go take a picture of it. Dude, he, um, he he looks great. Yeah, He's still take- sharp as a tack. And I'm, uh, to be honest, I'm calling vampire. <laughs> yeah. if it, it's either um, vampire or he's still method acting low pan. One of the two. Not drunk fantastic. enough to make an inappropriate so, comment. Let's keep going. Yeah. Well, I wanna, Do I, I get say, to the um, Big Trouble in Little China reference? Come on. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Harry Shum Jr. has my birthday, so I got to shout him out. He was also in. I Crazy love that Rich guy Asians too. He's awesome. Charlie oh, yeah. Wu. And he's big. In, he was in Glee way back when and then Shadow Hunters. Uh, but. This, this, the show stealer, the show stealer, besides Michelle Yeoh, who's just perfect, <laughs> Ki Kwan, who has this very high pitched voice, and he's this man, and I'm like, man, this guy sounds, and he sounds and looks really fucking familiar. 
He's only made four movies since 1997. Four movies since 1997, three since 2002. So he is not a prolific actor, but he's really great. How long did it did take you, you, did you guys, to get there, did, dude? Yeah. Did you guys? Long, did you guys figure it out? I figured it out in the movie theater, but only because I wasn't sure. I was just like, "It's him." There's no way it's not him. I can just hear him saying it. Which which movie was it? Goonies for you? Uh no. For or, me, it or was Indiana uh, Jones. Indiana Jones. Indiana and the Jones, Temple of dude. Doom. Indy! Yeah. Yeah, Indy, yeah. So he was the indie kid from Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Doom. And then he was fucking Data and the Goonies the next year, which I believe is one of Dave's favorite movies. So that is a 1984, 1985. I've seen that about as many times as uh, Mr. Hong's appeared in films. So. And so that was as a child. <laughs> Apparently in the Goonies, he had to spell out the curse word because he wasn't allowed to curse. So that's why he spelled out S H I N T. Um, and then he g- became a martial artist. So he's done some stunt work. He apparently was like additional crew stunt coordinator on The One with Jet Li and X Men. But I have no idea what he's been doing for the past 20 years. So way to come in hot, dude, because this yeah. is fucking awesome. And then he's going to be in another Michelle I, Yeoh dude, film next year with um, Daniel seen- Destin, Craig, who directed, um, he directed Shang-Chi. The they're, amount of times I've seen The ever. Goonies. Didn't get that until you just said that right now. I, I missed it completely. <laughs> just, I, I was so boom. wrapped up in everyone else's performance. Yeah, you just blew my fucking mind. Like, I, I realized <laughs> why why I gravitated towards the guy. And yeah. holy shit, did he come uh-huh. up. Isn't like, that crazy? Yeah. He's still yeah. the same voice. <laughs> so he has 15 IMDb credits. And he's like 50-something. And he is great in this movie so sorry to harp on the cast but the cast is sensational it and they really need is. to be because this movie asks a lot of them i'm gonna read the imdb quote and then i'm gonna punt <laughs> i'm gonna punt so fucking hard. oh also shout out to jenny slate and for our broadway fans out there that listen to oh, us yeah. how you doing aaron lazar aaron yeah, lazar I saw him. You would, yeah you would, i was like is that fucking aaron lazar <laughs> yeah, aaron lazar is the tv musical soldier. hot dog hands hot Sunit- dog fucking- sunita mani is also the the tv stars that they say okay let's get into the plot and then again i'm punting everything everywhere all at once <laughs> and an aging chinese immigrant this is michelle yo is swept up in an insane adventure where she alone can save the world by exploring other universes connecting with the lives she could have led which one of you two brave souls want to get us wants to get us started here? Jesus fucking Christ, dude! So All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you a story. <laughs> okay, so the, I I'll, I'll give you this is not gonna be for everyone. Some people are gonna walk out and go, "What the fuck was that?" But like the people sitting next to me left 15 minutes in. Oh, they Isn't and that but crazy uh, that well, way? no, the first the first 20 minutes is them setting up the family and setting up the story. Yeah, I and I think I think they kind of went, "Oh, this is just like a Chinese immigrant film. I'm gonna leave." I don't know what Do they you thought. Remember the I'm moment just... that they left? I'm just curious. Um, I don't, but I remember the, her hitting me, me with her bag when she sat down. So I was kind of mm. like, "Yeah, fuck off. You can leave. I know That's where this so goes." Crazy. You don't. Um, this movie yeah. could have been ten different movies at that point. Oh my god! Yeah, like they, they, it could have been they, literally a million different also, movies at that point. Like to put yeah. it out, they left an IMAX screening. Oh, That's yeah. not a cheap walkout. Like a, do they cheap. have concessions? They, it's like a hundred dollar They gotta be they gotta be A-list. They're just trying I mean, to get I mean, their A-list. At least up. one of them's A-list, I'm sure, but that's still a twenty-six, twenty-seven dollar walkout. Like, they're just sausages. they're trying to get their, their they're trying to get their uh, five dollar reward, which you get after <laughs> seeing like six movies AMC <laughs> A-list. But I'll tell you, like I, I if you want to like the blurb doesn't do it justice. If you want to describe it, I think uh they've created what I can only describe as David Lynch's Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness in the style of Scott Pilgrim with, but with the fights from Shang-Chi. Pretty good. Mm-hmm. I would throw yeah. Cloud Atlas in there for the ending oh, too, but I think yours yeah. is pretty good. Okay, all right, yeah, cool. Yep. Yeah. I, the ending, yeah, was, it just, this does not finish where it starts at all. Um, and I'll, uh, like, no. it just, it just <laughs> it pretends to. <laughs> it does Physic- not. <laughs> physically, physically it does. <laughs> but like everyone, Everyone in this film is phenomenal. Everyone yeah. committed to the bit. And I, I like I referenced Scott Pilgrim because not since Scott Pilgrim have I seen someone make a film where I was like, fuck you, this is where it's going. Come along or don't. And I went along and there were times when my chin was on my chest. I just had the slack jaw, like the slack jaw of joy watching what was happening on screen there was some amazing like the fight choreography choreography in this is amazing. Yeah. This the cinematography in this, like my mind explodes considering editing this. Oh yeah, I can't fuck, even, man. I can't, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. Like, that. like good <laughs> form, <laughs> Paul Rogers. Damn good form. I hope that guy's okay. Because, like, just, holy fuck, how do you put this I wanna, together? 
I want to see their storyboards really bad. <laughs> yes. I mean, Jesus. Jesus. Fucking, I mean, yeah. John, John, take it away. Uh, yeah, we'll try to deconstruct that a little bit more. Not necessarily for the sake of spoilers, because I don't think we can really spoil this, but just so you'll understand the oh, filmmaking really a little bit more. But um, you're going to hear me in this episode refer a lot to what it feels like to take hallucinogens, because... This is John. Is, I'm not expert just, on hallucinogens here. I have a mouthful of hallucinogens. <laughs> we have a hallucinogens expert here on the podcast I mean, this look, week on the Love of Cinema. I, will wear that, I, I think I have that to say this we're all experts in hallucinogens. <laughs> I will wear that cap proudly. And this is a. Uh, it, it's like they understood. It's like they were able to deconstruct how it feels to go through that kind of experience, and uh, in a linear way as well. So not just this overwhelming emotional thing. What just happened to me? That was a trip. You literally just said it. We end up physically in the same place we were. It was like we go on this journey with them emotionally and the way they mess with waves of editing, with the waves of what was happening to them. It is exactly what happens when you're in those states of mind, so it's states of being on those particular substances. And uh, the, I, 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 I'm so jealous of whoever gets to interview these guys and whoever got to just be a fly on the wall in their process. Because uh, I don't think yeah. I've ever seen anything quite like this. I'm the asshole who has not seen Swiss Army Men. I have a lot of people who know me who kept saying over the years, John, I think you would really dig that movie. It's, it's really, it's kind of cra- It's kind of weird, but still emotional. Like it's not just for the sake of being strange. And if this is, uh, if this is where they're going, I don't, I don't even care if they peaked. This could be the last thing they ever make if they want to. Yep. This is one of those movies that you do not have to like. I don't even know if that's the right word to say you like it or not. It's just like tripping. It's not about if you liked it or you didn't like it. Your life has changed forever because of it. Like this movie affects you and you cannot deny that it is a... Uh, what is it? What is it? What is it? You can't say Turn your life has right changed forever word. if watching it and then get mad at the gush alarm. Right? Well, I was just about to finish. I was just about to finish. This is, this is a capital, all capital letters. This is a work of art. It he's, doesn't mean you're going wrong. to like it. He's not. It wrong just means you have to bow down in front of it and say, "How did they do that? You, how I mean, did they fucking do that? You will take. I don't something understand from it. how they made it. <laughs> and I, no matter I do what, this, we all do this for a living. Like this is exactly yeah. what we're in. And I cannot even imagine how I begin to approach the kind of storytelling that they did. It's unbelievable. Do you know what? Hats off to A twenty four for like, fuck yeah, let's go for it. And all the other studios so. involved. Yeah. Obviously, it was like. Because how do you pitch this? How do you pitch to Michelle Yeoh? An aging gonna... Chinese immigrant goes <laughs> on an insane adventure, <laughs> right? I guess. I mean, I think they have a style that they're known for from their music videos. I think they also, did some of this in Swiss Army Men from some clip, some clips I saw. They they were nodding in that direction, and I think they were able to talk thematically about what mm. was going to happen, which even just thematically is interesting as fuck. They used the device of martial arts and really interesting editing techniques uh the time factor is just the it's just the vehicle right mm. it's all those stories it's the way they use martial arts and editing that made it so interesting but really what this, happens to also, the character I, I really is, is the beautiful cin- on its like, own the cinematography style changes as well depending on like lot. what universe they're in <laughs> what what yeah. what personality a particular person that scene has like it was all adaptive what is in the, it's in the title, dude. Like it really yeah. is. It's like, it's like they, it's in the title. I don't really, I didn't know what to expect I when we like were going to see it, but it is kind of something in this. I just, get, what a way to of start end. off. Like, yeah. What could possibly beat this in the Academy Awards for those technical achievements? I can, next year, like this might be one of those movies yeah. where you're just like, good luck editors. If anything beats this in editing, <laughs> like there's just, there's, <laughs> there's no way that anything could touch it. And let's just celebrate the fact that this is a, you don't see a lot of movies that sit around this budget nowadays. It's twenty five million. Dude, it's still I, out in about three theaters here. It probably will get that money back, but I don't I know looked, how much more it's going to make. But I looked up the visual wow, effects 25. guys, and the visual effects, by the way, are fucking phenomenal. Without like, they're not distracting. They they form part of the story. They're, some of them are very yeah. subtle, but yeah. I also noticed no visual effects houses are credited. It was seven guys. What? The stunt team is larger than the visual effects team. I would also I, like look up the stunt team and the visual effects team. Just follow those guys on Twitter because honestly, that's they are another doing reason. Some shit, man. Like, yeah, but, I mean, if you can find yeah, follow. A, a lot of those fights were practical, but I feel like Dude. that's why we keep using the word editing. And a lot of people, I think this is fun. Let's let's focus on this for just a second. 
I felt this way before I started making movies. I don't think most people really know what an editor does. They think there's a script and that you shoot. I think most people think you shoot in order. And then most of the things that look the way they look are because that's what the set Hmm. looked like. And then you put it together the way it was written. And then the director basically gets exactly what they shot. And then the editor is just the person who kind of puts it together. They did that in the outfit, but not this. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, it happens the, sometimes. That was shot it's in sequential just, order. Sure, and maybe yeah. then it is like close to building an assembly. But I mean, this is a good lesson of they. I guarantee you, they did have ideas, if not very specific storyboards of each flash. But there are oh, so many sequences not. where there are within several seconds, you see a lot of different images very quickly, and it's different things. Different things are happening in the same image. Sometimes the person's face is in the exact same place. That might be a little bit easier to just do like you know, a really fast edit. But there's a lot of times where this person goes in and out of different times and the action that they're doing in each time period influences what happens to them emotionally before and after they go into that quick cut. And I mean, this is like, this is where the art of that lives. And when you back up away from this, how do you actually track and clock the emotional arc of a character who is going in and out of these very jarring sequences that's editing as well to put it in context there's one character in the middle of a fight who gets hit several times and when they get hit they snap into an alternate universe and that alternate universe character reacts and not once do you lose track of where we are it's done so well like it comes out, it bounces right. back, and we're back in the fight. You don't lose track of where you're going or where you've been. Like you're always aware of exactly what's happening. And to do that in a fast moving fight scene like that, where hits are coming left, right, and center, and you're snapping to a fucking alternate universe, like that's amazing. Also, to be, and I think this is, we're safe to say this now. And Jeff, I think, come at me, dude, with this, because I think you're going to agree. I could not stop thinking, like, what the fuck did it feel like acting in this? You're in them, <laughs> this random scenario and a director's job, ultimately, the only thing they're actually in charge of since they're not when they say action, they don't do anything. So the only thing a director is actually supposed to be thinking about is performance. They are the actors. Right. Like they are their lifeline. Uh, a director's job basically is to give an actor circumstances because most of the time movies are shot out of sequence and they're not perfectly understandable. It's not a play. Can you imagine the hundreds, if not thousands of little moments that are just little moments where they had to tell, you know, one of the lead characters, usually here's the circumstance, here's the moment you're supposed to play. And it comes before this and after this. Can you imagine just communicating that and being an actor yeah. to say, I trust you, I'll do that. Because I mean, yeah. what the yeah. fuck? There was no before, there's no moment before in all of those crazy sequences. They can't play the microsecond before. I, I wonder <laughs> yeah. if I wonder if these directors were so well. What did I What did I just hear? I, I was listening to the directors' symposia, maybe of of like a lot of the Oscar nominated directors this year. Except I think they threw. I don't think Belfast was up for director. There was there was one person. Whatever it was, it was Denny. It was Spielberg. It was Paul oh, Thomas Anderson. Jane, um, I think Jane Campion was there. and Kenny. So somebody. Somebody said, I think it was Kenneth Branagh said he worked with like Joan Allen or something. And they said, what do you look for in a director? And she said, honestly, I just look for someone who's really organized. So I think maybe having two writer directors in this case, where they both co-wrote the script and co-organized it, I would, I wouldn't be surprised. I hope for their sakes that they I mean, were so organized that each universe, because the idea of this. They needed two. So they're, they're parallel universes. They kind of feel like concentric circles. So. Not the first time in the world that we've had parallel universes here, which is why I'm glad that this movie was subversive. So my this is sort of my overall re- my overall view is very good. I think the ending dragged a little bit for me. I got a little squirmy in my seat, and I was like, okay, make your point. I feel like they made the same point three times in a row over the course of like 20 minutes, and I was like, come on, let's go. Um, but that's just me. Otherwise, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, like seriously, when the rocks when they made that point at the rocks, I was like, fuck yeah, go back to the laundromat. And instead, we still had six different sequences in six different universes. And I was like, no, you made your point. And then they had to, like, remind me of the point. They said the same line again, which is like, we're nothing. We're all shit. We're, none of this matters. So therefore, and I was like, we made that 10 minutes ago. Why are we banging this point home? That so, wasn't sorry. the point. That was the that. theme. Okay. Just dragged out for me. That's all I'm saying. Great. And so um, <laughs> otherwise, fantastic. I'm glad it was subversive. I'm glad they put humor into this and not just to be funny, but because it mixes it up. It, it makes it different from all of the other stuff. And because life's ridiculous. All of this is, everything's ridiculous. But anyway, 
Oh, fuck, I lost my train of thought. The concentric circle thing, the actors, just the just the fact that one subtle thing that happens in our universe is our universe affects all of the other universes. I think that's a very powerful point. So for the actors, I'm hoping that they got a storyboard with all of the different universes, like almost separate. <laughs> I, I almost wish that there's a way of, of creating six or however many there were. I mean, they were like Dude, 250, this, but this storyboard how, the, would have looked like a game of 3D chess. But especially like, the ones so at the ridiculous. end, but especially the ones at the end yeah. for Michelle Yeoh, because she essentially had the same um, intention modified six times. So her looks were similar, but there was a little bit different behind the eye for each one. So, yeah, as, yeah, I that's, I thought about that the entire time. And every time she did a costume change, I was like, did Michelle Yeoh just sit in a whole fucking fitting and makeup session for a three second insert in a fucking montage? Also, yeah, probably. Also, they definitely put an image of her on the red carpet for a Crazy Rich Agents premiere because you could literally read in yellow and red Crazy Rich behind her character at some point in this movie. And I was like, I was like, I was like, honestly, at that point, they're like, I think the point that they were trying to make resonated. And I'm glad that it started kind of grungy because these kinds of movies can be too beautiful. And Mm. it was beautiful in a lot of parts, but I'm glad that it started not beautiful. It started very being John Malkovich. Like, this is like, not a place that, of course, Ooh, they want to escape. That's a good comparison. I like that. But just as a place, yeah, like, of course, you want to like escape. Of course, you want to dive into a different. How how strange and quirky and gross it was at the beginning. All right, should we stand in the spoiler? That's so good, Dave. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? Could you imagine making spoiler this alarm. movie and then having some guy on a podcast be like, eh, it dragged a little bit for me at the end. <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine? No, could I you imagine spending that. like I five years that. on this movie? Dragged it. This this was a labor of love. This was an absolute labor of love. Like, you could tell that, like, they spent so much time on the detail. We didn't even mention Jamie Lee Curtis, who turns up in this as well. And her feet. Dude, I almost don't want to mention it because, like, is she a yeah. spoiler? I was like, what no, is, she's, is that? No, she's not a spoiler. That? that was She's in the trailer. Um, the trailer? I didn't, what does that even look like? I didn't yeah. watch the trailer. How, how do, do they, you think I found out about this film? I was raving about this, like, a month ago, like, two months ago. Do they... Do they hint at the style and stuff in the trailer, or is yeah. it oh, a little bit? Wow. Oh, that's a shame. That's too bad that they. Well, no, it not not as it does. It doesn't. It definitely. I was still very fucking surprised by where we went. Let's face that. <laughs> Let's face it. But they do. They give away the premise as such. As in, we're going to be jumping to alternate universes. They don't really tell you how the technology works as such. Like. I, that's one of the things I loved about the writing in this as well is like that they thought out how this is going to work and like the technology works by throwing your mind into an alternate universe, not you. It throws your mind where you collect the skills and bring them back with you. But to get there, you've got to do something in the opposite direction to slingshot you into that universe in the first place. And the thing in the opposite direction is completely fucking random, which leads <laughs> to some great comedy later on. Yeah. And oh some really God, the, the, uncomfortable, the weird comedy. There's some weird, there's some weird butt stuff that comes up. <laughs> that, that that slow mo of the guy in midair with his pants down is oh is my like God. my entire theater was going insane when that happened. Yeah, I saw this at 9 p.m. on a Monday night because my fucking train shut down on the way to my first viewing of this. Yes, which is because of a hanging wire. Late. But yeah, a, a uh, hanging wire on my train. They kicked us out. I was fucked. <laughs> All right, Let, you know what? Let's get into some spoilers. We're we're, we're you know we're thirty minutes in. Let's uh, let's fire up the spoiler alert and uh, let's talk about how the, where this goes. All right, spoiler. So yeah, if yeah, everybody get off the treadmill and uh, go and watch this movie. So where does hopefully this, go? this gets wider. This gets wider. <laughs> Please don't watch this at home without do good not. speakers. I, like, please, dude, I, I, please I'll tell you what. On your I was, or your I was phone. absolutely privileged to catch an IMAX screening of this, and I was in row F, so I was in this fucking movie. Like, oh my god, when it when it gets to like the montage of realities, and you get that full in the face, I was just leaning back in my chair like it. It was, I look like the guy from 2001 at the end. Like, I, like, I can't tripping? imagine. I just, yeah. there's no, there's I can't no. imagine all those quick edits in, in the bigger fry saw in standard. And they like didn't the, cheat either. Like they, they shot all those. Like I'm sure standard's <laughs> fine. I just, I just, it's not in many theaters right now, folks. If there is a city near you that's showing it, this is a movie that is worth going to have a theater experience for. Yeah. And not just like you want to see it on the big screen. It's not just a general sense. It doesn't feel like it was designed 
for you to have a, a minimal experience. It's supposed to overwhelm you. It's it's mm. supposed to. And watch like, it all like sit through all of it. Don't give you if, like if you don't get it, you might be tempted to leave. Don't leave. You will find something. There is something for everyone in this movie, and that's the beauty part of this thing. Everybody wow. gets something out of it. All right. So what do you guys want to spoil first? I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis, straight up. Jamie, let's let's talk about that. Her, uh, Jamie Lee fucking Curtis, dude. Oh, my God. Like, uh, for a, a, a supporting role, she just brings some absolutely sinister comic relief. Like, it's both sinister and she has the comic relief area. And then by the end of it, there's this real tender sweetness in that character because you experience the alternate realities of her and it kind of explains why she's like she is and stuff like that. And then you get like all the other realities. I, I'm just, I'm just going to say it like the sausage finger world freaked me out a little bit. Tripping. I'm going to say uh, it again. Yeah. Just, I feel like I need my own buzzer to be like the things you think about when you're in. They didn't just do it. They didn't just do it once. It became one of the universes it a thing. that we went back to. Well, a lot. That, that's the thing. Like, at at first lot. I was like, oh, that was a lot. At, that was a big one. <laughs> at first I was like, what the fuck? But then I realized what they were doing with that world. And I realized that like, she is in a relationship with her in that world. And I was like, Oh my she god, that's like she's actually playing fucking the piano with sweet. Yeah, yeah. The piano but there was a feet. sweetness there. Like there was definitely a sweetness in their interaction in that in that. And then the the scene outside the laundromat as well with her between her and Jamie Lee Curtis when they're just, you know, like when you sharing, get, sharing a when vape you can and, make when you can make a crowd of people like lean forward and and furrow their brow in sadness when two people with hot dog hands break up. Like yes. when that that they've, it's they've like got it's hot like, dogs and fingers. Like, it's fucked it's up. It's like but three yeah. microseconds long, and you see them, and you know what's happening in that moment. They're that they're getting a divorce, or they're they're. She's asking them like, "I can't do this anymore," and and you see what's happening, and it's like that's all it takes. That's why this is. It's like they understood how powerful, like what filmmaking can do if you use it correctly. It really yeah. is just image and sound, and the way it's put together in context of other images and sounds. It doesn't need to be this long, crazy sequence. There are so many like tiny things. It, it trained everyone in my audience. You could feel them. They were starting to react to these quick cut sequences differently. Mm. It was only overwhelming and jarring the first time. By the end of it, we all got really good at paying attention to what was happening. Yeah, in it each altered of them. your perception. So it was drugs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, I mean, we need yeah. a shipping buzz for this but, one. So basically, so, so here's basically the story, right? This this family of uh, Chinese American immigrants who run this laundromat. They have a daughter who is appears like late teens, probably not early 20s, probably late teens, maybe early 20s, who is gay. And they haven't really come to terms with that. They have really serious monetary problems. So they're going to the IRS a lot. Jamie Lee mm. Curtis plays their auditor, who is yep. basically running through all of their financial information. It's very clear that they have had to do this year after year. They are never going to make ends meet. Life is hard. The daughter is unhappy. They're ashamed. And then the husband's petitioning for divorce. It's yes. yeah, everything that could possibly go wrong. All of that nowhere. happens early. Like it was That's cool. Like I had 20 no idea where this was going to come from. That's this, the first 20 minutes. Yeah. This could have been a fucking PTA movie for the first 15 minutes, you know? And then it turns. And then somewhere, we don't want to, we don't need to say exactly where, but at some point, the husband just shifts gears and he presents himself as though he is from a different universe. And that there is an existential problem with reality and that yeah. he has traveled to this universe because he's pretty sure this version of his wife, Michelle Yeoh, is the only version of her that can fix the problem. God, I don't even know if I want to spoil the problem because mm. I don't even know if yeah, I want to no. say I feel no, like don't I, do it. Don't do it. I mean, yeah. It's always like such like... a specific turn. It's so strange in the way they go. Everything that, that, they that... go. That, that, that just, shit happens they, to me in, in an elevator. I'm like, no, nah, fuck off, mate. I'm late for work. They put like, it's, everything <laughs> on a bagel, Dave. Everything. Everything, <laughs> everything on a bagel. You'd never put oh everything God. on a bagel. Why is it black? What total <laughs> solid black, just covered in all the seeds. I mean, yeah. it is a. It's so we kind of, we kind of, it, it starts to turn into this thing. Drugs. There are black hole references. Drugs. There turns into this whole giant convoluted thing where that's 
series of events turns into Michelle Yeoh in this universe trying to take control of her own power because in this universe she has none. She's a shell of herself. She's not powerful. She's yeah. a failure. Oh yeah, the, blah, blah, blah. like that's why she was picked because well, she, she feels the worst. that way. She feels like, no, that way. No, no, that's important. She literally gets told at one point she's the she was picked because she was the worst version of herself. <laughs> yeah, she's that's living her she, worst she life. <laughs> Just, yeah. just actually this there's so many references that you could pull but but inside out was probably one that i i pulled on a lot where if you sure, just rewire yeah. mm-hmm. those you could see yourself differently in fact the most the most powerful line to me other than when there were the two rocks which i think should have been five minutes from the end of the movie but i think that um my favorite line other than that was fingers nobody. on the trigger with you buddy <laughs> my, my favorite trigger. line other than we'll that, that was um the the wealthy guy the, when, the, when the two of them weren't with each other, they both ended up successful when he said, you know, in another life, I, w- I would really like to know what it would have been like if we just did laundry together every day. And I was like, oh fuck. God. I was like, that's what this movie's really about. That's what this whole movie's really about. There's so see, much shit it, in the it, world. See, There's, it wasn't, it, we, we but that's what from you a took hole. from we it. Started, There's something for everyone. <laughs> that's fine. But we started yeah. from, but let's say we started from a black hole. We all started, we were all within, an, all of our particles were within an inch of the entire universe. And now there's a trillion universes that are happening. Most of them are probably extinct. Are aliens real? I don't know. But they were real at some time. There are probably more alien species that are, have been extinct mm. than there are now. And, and to quote Monty Python, and none of it there's intelligent life somewhere out in space because there's bugger all down here on earth yeah exactly and so (laughs) and so the three members of this family represent everything we represent the whole universe and we represent Mm. nothing at the same time and i think it's really powerful to have gone through this crazy fucking journey and have had that happen and the things like everything in a bagel for some reason they knew that it was both really funny but at the same time they were so convinced that it was powerful too. But also, so the like, fact that it's hilarious that we all started, if we really, if this really, if the black hole theory is real, if the, if the, you know, the theory of everything is real, how fucking, how fucking ridiculous is that? It's it's almost stupid, right? It's like, it's almost too stupid to be real. So therefore it's probably real. And that's the, that's the truth of this. We bog ourselves down with so much, but really, but all that really matters also, is that they're a family. When it comes to a head and they activate said bagel, how fucking sinister does that thing look? terrifying yeah like there's an just, active so it's not danger just, like and it's it, not just i don't it, think funny is the right word because there are there is comedy in it but they went from introducing things comedically to the the essence of what absurdity is because mm. that's what happens to that's the right. villain in this story right. the villain I, I do feel comfortable saying this the villain in this story becomes has already become aware of these multiverses and has therefore gone so far into journeying in and out of them because they are highly skilled at it that they have taken on a stance of nothing matters and therefore everything should be destroyed. And the theme of this movie, which is why it's so compelling, which was the theme of my very first mushroom trip, if I might add, is that because nothing matters, it only matters if you want it to matter. And so the last half of this movie is about Michelle Yeoh and the family realizing that all of that is inevitable. This is like where this is this is this is why people get depressed. This is why people start to question everything at certain points in their life when they start wondering what they could have done. Is this really it? And the the star line for me, the real turn, is when she finally realizes that all those best versions of her life were just another version of her life. They weren't necessarily more or less fulfilling emotionally mm-hmm. in terms of purpose and all and, those things. And every one that of those versions right there, had their own problems. That theme right there could be really fucking trite. If they were not careful, it was the telling that eventually got us there. And the martial arts yeah. and all the fast editing sequences really helped. Everything, when she finally yeah. realizes that, for because for a while, it kind of feels, it feels, I mean this with respect, but it felt very Hong Kong. And I kind of thought that they were starting to use fighting as the way to get to everything. And fighting in a very specific sense, that there was good and there was evil and it was binary and that was it. And it started to get a little boring, not boring, but I started to predict it. And exactly at that moment, they started to mess with the one, the way people fight, which we can get there in a second, like how they attain skill. But she started to realize that she wasn't achieving anything by just fighting one person at a time. It didn't matter if she became the best fighter in the universe and could match the villain. The villain would never have been top because the villain didn't need to be defeated. The villain needed to be rescued. So when she got to this place where she realized, I'm starting to fight like you do. And she realizes that her husband operates from a place of love 
and it had to change everything about what she was fighting for, how she was mm. fighting, why she was fighting. That is the moment that the movie actually becomes what it is. Because up until that point, it is kind of a zany, psychedelic martial arts film, and it's it's funny. Um, if it weren't for the... So, Jeff, I know what you mean. The, the Rock thing, the second time we go back to The Rocks and they have a lot more dialogue, it won a little longer than I think it needed to. But when it comes back to The Rocks and she jumps off the cliff, they jump off the cliff together. I was all in. All in. Dude. Yeah, when that they happened, pull, I was... They, they pull you right back in. It, it's great. Yeah, I mean, I was... But that middle part, I know what you mean. But uh, can we talk about how they learn to fight or how she gets better at fighting? Because what a ridiculous... Okay. This is I, when they're also, sitting around the writer's I, I, room and they're I, I, like, is this going to work? I want to so bring it, out as it well. Was a, like, it was when, verse jumping, right? Verse the whole, jumping, verse like jumping, like universe yes. jumping. Okay. Yes. The, the first thing I want to point out, like, because we, we pointed out that, yeah, she jumps to other people and brings their skills back. But when we get to um, the scene where she's basically letting the rest of the family in on it and she talks, it's like that film with the raccoon. Oh and God, I'm, like, I'm, I'm like, I'm like with them. I'm, I'm like, That's I'm like, so what funny. the fuck is she talking about? And the this, payoff, guys, this the is payoff for, for this about. joke is twenty minutes later. You don't enjoy so much. It's so much footage too. They just leave it hanging, and then they go there. Rakatui. You know what a joke is. You know when there's that rare joke that's okay the first time you hear it. And then the second time you hear it, it's better. And then the third time you hear it, it's better. And then the fifth time you hear it, it's the funniest joke you ever said. They fucking put all of their chips in on this. They split their aces at the poker at the backjack table, and they were like, "I swear on my life, just stick with us. This is gonna be fucking hilarious." My, when she, my takes, theater, when she my takes that audience. guy's hat off, oh my god! When she takes his hat off in public, <laughs> and he goes, "You ruined everything. You took everything from me." So. My audience was howling their fucking face off at that point, like. When yeah, oh my god! I know. And there are the so many. So good at cooking too. He was so good at cooking. <laughs> that raccoon dude. It's like that movie. I mean, there's. It's just god damn. His it. look at her. The you talking about the actors? His look at her while he's chopping up at the, the fucking hibachi grill. <laughs> I didn't even realize the fucking raccoon was in his hat. <laughs> No, because I hadn't let you in yet. Staring at her while he's chopping and up. They, like they set so that up like ten minutes ago. <laughs> I know. Also, I this is. <laughs> She knows too much. He just has to die. <laughs> the fighting oh too. Oh let's let's it, let's just even just the raw essentials. If you really are just drawn to this because you've heard there's cool fighting, there is. There were like there three really applause moments in my theater. Yeah, where people literally like clapped after sequences of the Bro, fighting because it was I'm so wearing, well I'm done. Wearing, so I'm original. A, the first I'm wearing fight a fanny the, pack. I'm wearing a fanny pack everywhere I go from yeah, now on. The first fight in the IRS office was when I had my jaw on my fucking chest. I lost my mind over that fight. It was just a pure moment of joy that I have not experienced in a film in a long time. I was like, "This is fucking amazing!" Because not only like did he literally swap characters, he almost pulled a Christopher Reeve. Uh, where he takes the Superman glasses off and fixes his posture. Yeah. Like that simple trick. He he suddenly became something else and he became more confident. And then he kicked the shit out of these security guards. And like, dude, I want to, like you said it was practical earlier, but I hope they swapped to Digi Doubles because if not, I just watch five fucking murders. Because some, the, <laughs> some of the, yeah, some of the, no, some of the landings, oh my God, you'd be dead. But like, it was, absolutely joyful to see that level of like stunt choreography in a film and like half of these guys were, half of these guys as well worked on shang chi as well so um like it was, oh yeah That's yeah awesome. yeah like they are doing the rounds they're getting the work and fuck they deserve it they did some great work on this that that well i, I actually wonder if um if oh fuck i just closed his tab if if data shit um key <laughs> key Kwan. Ki Kwan. i wonder if because he he was a martial arts coordinator he was a stunt coordinator for a little mm. bit too i wonder well i wonder if he had any say in this but he probably didn't but i wonder if um the reason he's honestly such a good actor is after decades of becoming 
other people as a, as a, when you're a stunty, you're, you're essentially, you have to take the essence of the yeah. actor, unless you're, you know, security guard, which by the way, I think the head security guard is a stunty. I've seen that guy before and I feel like he's always in, in fights. So maybe that's why he was landing so well, but I feel like <laughs> Ki Kwan, he was doing like, they were doing energy work as actors, which are, which are ways, especially when you're playing twins or when you're, pl- when you have to do shifts. Like I think um, Anne Hathaway was trying to do this when she did the, because that change where she has to turn into Catwoman in Dark Knight Rises, which is the only moment of this movie I've ever talked about outside of it, because that movie I want to forget about. Um, but that change, <laughs> like sometimes yeah. <laughs> you play with these psychological like ideas of energy. What he did, Dave, exactly what you're talking about, he did it 30 times throughout the movie. Yeah. Here's this like weak guy with a, with a high-pitched voice that became like, like almost like the cockroach from Parasite when the guy like like literally turned into the cockroach and he became so many different things. And Michelle Yeoh does this too, but she was pretty stoic in the whole movie. But he be, he was he played so many different variations of this person. He was the perfect supporting mm. character while yes. also being completely badass. It was wild. And that's why I that's it's one of the reasons this movie works so well. Like everyone in the cast just went all in. And Stephanie Shu's been around. She was in Mrs. Maisel. She was in Shang Chi too. Mm-hmm. Shang Chi as well. Um, yeah, we haven't got there yet. <laughs> guess how old? Guess how old uh, James Hong is? How old is he? Uh, no idea. Seventy. Ninety-five. Yeah. <laughs> no. Fuck, 90 fuck that dude. I call vampire. I call vampire. He's uh, yeah. He's either he vampire or he is sucking. He is sucking the life Did out he... of green-eyed girls in Chinatown, <laughs> like, like vividly. Yeah. Like, like that was, those were not like early childhood memories. <laughs> oh my God, Almighty! Yes, that's yeah. crazy. He remembers World War II. He I just had to drop Dracula... out, Dave. You're gonna have to have some fun editing that. What were you saying? Oh, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, he might be Dracula. Dracula. He may be Dracula himself. Um, that's insane. Uh, sorry, what were you talking about? <laughs> I just had to throw that in there. I, I wanted to point <laughs> out that I did think it was interesting. You know, it was written by these guys too right like yeah. they, they wrote it and directed it so i thought it was really interesting that they when they finally reveal about the not defeating rescuing this villain that they kept it and i might i might be laying my cards on the table here let's just keep going with the card metaphors that there is one specific relationship between michelle yo and the villain uh mm. not just not michelle yo and uh ki juan that is as a unit. I thought that was interesting that it wasn't parents that were dragged together equally into that theme. It was a very specific relationship that they yeah. were commenting on. And yeah. I thought that was really interesting in the final subversion. It was like they, they subverted so many uh. things, genre, uh, tech, filmmaking techniques, you know, storytelling genre. Yeah. Like there were so many things that they were fucking with along the way that were funny, absurd, horrifying. They kept messing with this stuff, but then ultimately they, they kind of, they kind of made you think it was going to go into, it's all about family. And it, it wasn't that simple. It was more no. specific about a, this yeah, one relationship. True. And I thought mm-hmm. that was really, it was, it made me think. And I think that's a good thing. I don't think I was like, I was aware of it. <laughs> I think it's in, good when you think a little bit about it. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, but, but I was aware of it in the theater too. And it kind of did not take me out of it, but I was like, are they, is that what they're doing? Like I kept saying that, but then this was just the final blow and it was so emotional that I still was like, is that what they're doing? Cause you know, the movie kept making you think that was it. And then they would, <laughs> you go back in the, you know, around the carousel, yeah. but it was, that was what it was. And, and it, I think it ended up being something really even more unique than it could have been because it didn't just become it's all about all of us and we all matter and we're equal. It, it really, it, it wasn't that. And I think that uh, maybe people who see it and they could write a comment about it. Cause I'm not quite sure how to articulate it, but it was interesting that it, it didn't resolve um, fair. in the simplest <laughs> way that it could out of being, cause I kind of thought mm. it was going to, we started super, super, too. super simple. And I thought like, we're going to end up right back here and the way they get there will be special, but it, it ended up somewhere a little bit different. And I think that, yeah, that was uh, quite a choice. I think I'm I like to make disagreed about it. Well, back to what I was saying before, and I'm glad that I've settled. I, I made my peace with my point and I've settled with it, but I just assumed, I didn't know that they were going to do an action sequence for every single universe. Post rock, post rock, making that revel, re- that revel, you know, the revelation it's in three billboards. It's in a lot of movies now, right? We're nothing. This is all meaningless. So therefore, and that's the realization. And I feel like that's a realization that again, people make on hallucinogens back to your point, John. Um, but I'm, I'm happy that 
I'm happy that you said exactly what you said because I because I agree. I agree. It is very specific right. and it does end up backward. So I wish it got. Them. I feel like maybe that's a good place to end it. We agree. And uh, this was amazing. That's it. Yeah, this is. I'm going to give the, you. This is one of the, one of the most original, amazing things I've seen in recent history. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So original, here we are less. referencing a million different movies, but it's so original. Yeah. I wish I wish I would have said this at the beginning, but people may not have listened. So if you Jesus. are making it John. this far, if you are making John, it this far, our, which means John, don't you've shade seen our guests. it. What are, what are, what are you, you're which, are you oh, no, which means I you may have one. seen it by now. If you watched it and you listened to it this far, don't try to explain what this movie is about to your friends who haven't seen it. Right. No, just tell them to watch it and just say, you know, if you're if you like movies, just just go check it out. Like, yeah, don't try well, to explain. It's just it's going to cheapen it. If anybody has any mm-hmm. expectations about it, it's going to be something yeah. different. Just let it be what it is. Watch it. Come back and talk to me. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Or just stare into the everything too. bagel and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wink yourself out of <laughs> existence. Right. Take, <laughs> take some of John's mushrooms and stare at some bagels. God, um, almighty. <laughs> it has everything on it. It's got the mushrooms right there. Get Jenny Slate in some more movies. Um, so random that she was in this movie, but whatever. It was good. <laughs> I thought Big Nose, I thought she was going to be the, the person. Maybe that's what they wanted. I don't know. Anyway, people. Because she was getting shit on at the laundromat. I thought it was going to be her. And then it was, okay. Um, that's it. That's it. It is time for us to go and recommend some other things that we've been watching other than this here film. So we're going to walk around the block with a quick round of what you've been watching. Dave, we always start with you. All right. Dave, what you what you been watching? Well, I went on a little bit of a Percy Jackson kick this week. I was oh. just talking about Percy Jackson today, which I've never seen or read or yeah, heard, no, I, heard I, any of it. I, I went, because I, I watched uh, Lightning Thief years ago, and I was like, that sucked. And... Uh, <laughs> then I st- I have Apple Music and every now and then it kicks in the musicals because I like musicals and uh, I've been hearing a couple of tracks from Percy Jackson the musical I was like I'm going to give this a second chance because some of these songs are quite Pretty good, good. Score. Pretty good and score. Uh, yeah and uh, so I went through both of them uh, Lightning Thief and Sea of Monsters I could see more of this where is Logan oh, Lerman yeah. been where has he been because he had a moment Perks this Fury and then. Where's well, he been? Get him yeah, working, people. I don't know, but uh, they there is a apparently a Percy Jackson series coming with from HBO, so I'm quite happy about that. Is he in it? I don't I'll know. I'll look it up. Yeah. What's up, Dave? John. John? Uh, I want to begin this kind of get serious here for a second because this was one of the most powerful things I've seen in a long time. It is a documentary called Breaking Point: The War for Democracy in Ukraine. Oh. Uh, this is about to come out on Peacock, and I cannot push this enough, and I would love for us to push this in the show notes. The head of the, democ- the um, documentary department at USC, Mark Harris, and a uh, Ukrainian Wait, documentarian. That- Mark Harris, like the writer who used to write for Entertainment Weekly and is married to Tony Kushner? I doubt it. Okay. I doubt it. This man, uh, <laughs> Mark Jonathan Harris and Olis Sanin. And uh, so fucking sorry, I can't remember the name of the editor. He also works at, at our school. They made this um, basically from 2014, and it came out in 2018. But because of uh, I think it was called Winter Fire that that documentary that came out on Netflix about the Maidan War in 2014, nobody saw this. Ow. It's getting a re-release because it is the entire it is the history in a very compelling way of what led up to all the shit that has been happening in this century with Ukraine. If you care or are interested at all about what's happening and you want more context and you want to be moved emotionally and see some of the fucking heroes that are over there and while Vladimir Putin, if he had ever seen this documentary, would never have thought for one fucking second that he stood a chance (laughs) trying to just walk in there and take it. It was incredible. It's coming out on Peacock soon. I would love if we could push this. I can't say enough about it. It was so moving. Um, that was great. Okay. I finished Ted Lasso, which was really, which is really touching. Um, and uh, I watched, uh, uh, damn it, I watched another one. Of, oh, I watched uh, fucking this from the high to the low. I watched <laughs> Jungle Cruise, and I was very unimpressed. I'm sorry. I'm so shocked after everything I said about the trailer. I'm not at that. Tour. I've watched Jungle Cruise as well. I was like, 
Yeah, it was cute. It was, it was cute. It was okay. It was kind of fun. It was kind of fun. I, I think from the, the that team that turned uh, Pirates of the Caribbean into such an amazing series of like first few movies. Like mm. I thought those movies were really fun when they first came out. I don't think Jungle Cruise got there all the way for me, but it's on Disney Plus. If you want to have a fun time, they're fun to, to watch and listen to the banter. The Rock tells some really terrible jokes in a fun way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really buzzing that. He's supposed to. He's supposed that's to, what, just like in the ride. What, <laughs> they're I bad jokes on right. purpose. <laughs> he always wears like the same like jungle green colored shirt in every movie. And I think that was one of the ones that like he gets cited right. in. What have you been watching, Jeff? Not much. Um I, I was hot last week. All right, I, that's I it. Gave, that's like, it a lot of right. <laughs> I um but I will say, well, I watched a lot of NCAA basketball, if I'm being honest, and I think it was it's been really fun. Um and uh winning Chapel time. Hill and Duke on Saturday, right? First time ever in the history of ever, the tournament. I think so. And then Kansas Nova. It's just, I mean, it's all chalk after what a crazy fucking time. You have four of the, the five or six biggest schools ever. Anyway, winning time on HBO, people. I think this is my favorite episode. I like basketball, so uh, this was like mm-hmm. the most... It's still not too basketball heavy, I haven't but caught I think up this, yet. Was, this was my favorite behind. episode so far. I was really happy about it. And I um, think there is a. I think there's a guy that's going to play some golf next week that maybe we should just send some love to. That's crazy tiger that's <laughs> crazy tiger woods is playing in the master tiger can year. barely walk nuts. and he can barely open his eyes because of all the vicodin but he is going to get out there people <laughs> and he is going to my dad made a good point jeff you might care and i'm sorry dave i'm gonna say it. this is my last point my dad was like this is the first time he's ever gone to augusta and he has no pressure on himself he might play the best round of his life he might yeah but he can't he can't hit the, he can't hit the ball though he can't he's, he's gonna hit 200 yards straight he's gonna, I'm yeah. buzzing you both okay. he will you still him. he will still beat both of us in golf yeah. Logan Lerman was in Indignation 2016 The Vanishing of Sydney Hall End of Set and Shirley and then he's been in Hunters with Al Pacino so he's around but none of them are clicking people none of them are clicking go or support Logan Lerman all right that's it for us thank you you two for recommending this movie and for delaying this a day because of my train issue New York City First yeah. time we've had to cancel a podcast because of a train issue. Those happen. That's but actually surprising, go. honestly. Yeah, to be <laughs> honest, the, the MTA, yeah. Morbius next week. Ugh. Fucking Sonic Ooh. in two weeks, whether you guys one like of it or not. Their, one, one out of three co-hosts is seeing a special preview screening with Jared Leto tomorrow night. Punch you in have the face. to be on our podcast next week. All right, John has to be here. I love it. Yeah. Our mushroom expert, our, our hallucinogen <laughs> expert has to be here next week for Morbius. <laughs> Thank you all so much for listening. Have a good one, film fans. Bye.